Let's roll. Only 5.36 o'clock, I think, before we're in the second session. Get yours in. She picked them up? Yeah, she did. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize in advance for the uh, long executive session. It'll fill up. We've got some uh, good negotiation issues to talk about. Really, uh, yeah, not for next year. Okay, we're all set to go. Everything's on? We'll call a meeting to order. We had letters of communications to the board. Uh, there are a couple to go over this evening. Um, specifically, uh, the packet I'll direct your specific attention to page one and two, or page uh, two and three of the packet. Page four is specifically addressed to Steve Lawrence, but I thought it would be appropriate to uh, look this up on uh, board level. This is regarding the uh, Department of Environmental Conservation thanking the Ogdensburg Bridge and Port Authority uh, for helping with the Peregrine Falcon Project, and specifically the Bureau of Wildlife would like to thank you and your staff for cooperation and enthusiasm in monitoring the Peregrine Falcons. We particularly appreciate the construction and the installation of the Peregrine Falcon Nest box at your facility. Um, especially, it goes on to name our, our staff here by name. Uh, Steve Lawrence, Scott Chappell, Brian Woodrow, Jim Dupree, Morris Russell have been extremely helpful. They provided DEC staff and volunteers with reports of Peregrine activity, transportation, to the bridge and other observation points in the area that are responsible for the construction and placement of the nest box at the Bridge and Port Authority. The efforts are very greatly appreciated. We look forward to working with you in the successful nesting season 2008. Signed by Blanchetown Fish and Wildlife Technician from Departmental, uh, Department of Environmental Conservation, Region 6. Good job, Steve. Did you get in the nest at all? Tom, we will next year. <laughs> <laughs> DOT left you well, to take care of the pigeon. I definitely yeah, will I leave that up to you. I got one other uh, comment to make. Uh, communications. Uh, uh, Wade is a father here now of a new baby. Eight pounds, 13 ounces. Absolutely. Uh, Patrick. Uh, Patrick Ryan, 8 pounds, 13 ounces. That's our mom. <laughs> 21 inches long. Don't worry, my love you. handful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Approval of the minutes for a September 6th meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review them and read them? The 24th. And October 2nd. <coughs> I've reviewed them and I uh, recommend all three for... Uh, okay. I'll make we have a motion. Okay. Mary made the motion. Seconded by Roger. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Comments? Nobody else heard you. That's why I know what you <laughs> Comments and presentations of citizens. Staff reports. Staff reports. Uh, two things for your consideration will be sent out uh, under separate cover this month, uh, one of which is the MDNA, and the other is the uh, Ring Terminal Productivity Report. We'll get that out to you. It's not available for tonight's meeting. As far as the Executive Director report, I want to bring to your attention a couple of things that uh, uh, you recently uh, did here. Specifically, we got over 150 valid leads from the sure we can find the right one. Um, New Orleans had a uh, Break Fall 2007 conference, an annual conference. Uh, basically, everybody in the port industry is there. We saw our competitors from Albany were there as well. Uh, we got over 150 valid leads that we're following following up on at the present time, and you can see our new uh, booth and marketing image as well, and it's directly behind you over there, so it gives you 
feel for the marketing message we've got out there. Had uh, several different things going on during the month, including stevedore discussions, a lot of uh, port-related activity, uh, several various meetings, as you see there. Productive meetings on the airport side with the city of Ogdensburg and the town of Asugachi, working with uh, powers that be to improve Delta Connection Service, uh, working through contra several contract issues. On the economic development side, been an extremely busy month. Some of the projects that we've uh, Attended has been the uh, New York State Regional ESD Empire State Development Blueprint session held at Clarkson, and some of the other things that you see there as well. Again, just been an extremely busy month, uh, port focus. But that's not all that's been going on here at the authority. We've got the spray light, as you can see, over the industrial park at Building 14. See some of the shots there. It's coming along nicely. We're setting up for a heavy barge or a heavy uh, project cargo uh, lift. The turbines will be out going uh, this week. There's a tug and barge coming into port. We have an extremely, had an extremely busy month at the airport. This is one shot of the uh, airport during uh, uh, trustee weekend and the last weekend for the universities. You can see all the planes here. One of the key things that we'll talk about in future facilities committee meeting, this is our gas line, or our gas boy hose, if you will. What happens is when you have a large plane uh, parked in the only area of pavement that we have, the hose stops here and no other planes can fuel. In this particular case, this plane right here had to leave uh, to fuel in Messina and picked up about $2,500. So this is something we'll address at a future facilities committee meeting. So why was that one there? Why couldn't that one be moved? This one right here is uh, its actually deceptive. That, by comparison, is the FedEx plane. That's a Cessna up there in the back. This thing was a huge plane in its own right. It's about a $28 million aircraft. The wingspan on this was uh, tremendous, and it was about the only place that that put on OPTA property, just to, to handle that type of aircraft. But that being said... Uh, so it was allowed to park there, and then it blocked up the... Yes, and it did. It, it cost us some significant dollars in, in fuel. So, of course, yeah. The marketing booth... I think that pretty much covers a lot of the uh, a lot of the issues that we talked about. Over the next uh, 60 days, what we'll be doing is I'll be following up on the uh, port leads that we have, marketing leads for the bulk commodities conference. Um, I'll mention that we also uh, gave away a large number of city of Ogdenburg brochures, county brochures. Uh, Seaway Bulk Services brochures, in addition to 80 pounds of our own brochures at this uh, at this conference. So, it's a very good thing for for all parties involved. But Dan Lock is here. We have that great book conference. What? He right. did his best to us. Did you go with him? Well, Dan did. Dan said it's best to be. Well, you probably, whether you know it or not, you probably ran into him, right? Yes, yeah. we did. Yes, we did. Uh, what's going on over the next 30, 60, 90 days? We're following up, obviously, on the port marketing leads, the Commodities Conference, uh, working on goals and objectives for management personnel for the upcoming year, starting to shift gears there. Uh, the usual things, improving communication, continuing the marketing efforts, and uh, actually going to take a little bit of time uh, November. Time. How are our time studies going? You're, you're taking care of the time study. You're, you're, you're in charge with uh, no uh, time studies are being conducted uh, uh, through Mark and Bill, and those time studies should be available at the end of the year. So and that covers all our employees. We've got all our employees. All our employees are covered. And on that note, are there any questions on the, the report? No, I very briefly covered it, but gives you a feel for. What I've been up to in the past month. <coughs> no questions? Chief Financial.
financial officer, Mr. Uh, we received our pension retirement invoice in the mail a couple of days ago. Uh, it was within budget, cut to a couple of grand under budget, 173000 the dollar amount, so that's a big expense, so we're right in line there. It will be as planned. Uh, the budget is due January 1st for 0809. Fred, did we talk about a date for that? Are we going to do that later? Do it now if you want. Go to the next board meeting. <coughs> Looking at December 13th. Starting at noon. We lunch. We'll go into the budget until 2.30. We'll have a break for a half an hour for committee meetings. And hopefully back in session for the regular meeting at 3.30. A completion about 5 o'clock. So the 4th is moving to the 13th. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark will be gone from the 6th. 6th through the 9th. 6th through the 9th, but he's available by phone if you need him. He's going to get everything to you before, where you'll have time to look over the budget materials and stuff. So I'd like to start at noon on that day and uh, do a full afternoon and be out of here by 5. I think that's schedule meant. Hearing no problems, I know everybody will be here. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Mark. Um, other than what's in my report, I really don't have anything that's coming in since I wrote this. I just, uh, <clears throat> one quick question on the CSCA. We <clears throat> we got uh, some of that for a second of the session. Not this evening, Fred. Uh, there were some issues that came up with the CSEA agreement. We had originally intended to have that uh, uh, have that before you this evening, uh, but for the sake of argument, let's consider we're still in active negotiation. Okay. Mark, one question. We're reviewing the uh, payable stand finance. Uh, the workman's compensation insurance is the state insurance fund. Any reason why we're the, the state fund rather than Private carrier. Uh, we've had a couple of private carriers look at our rates and they can't they can't match them. Nice. I don't think we'll look at that in six months or so, but uh, we have had a couple of parties interested. Okay. Once we show them that, they kind of go away. You ever find their billing confusing? I always have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just wondered if it was only me. <laughs> Tell me. Uh, accountant to accountant. Yeah. One thing that's uh, in your report, Mark. If you're exploring some alternative health insurance coverage for the authority. Yes. Retirees. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of uh, different health care providers or insurance carriers, if you will, um, offer us a couple of different plans. This way we can stay the <coughs> services group would probably save about the health and the retiree's expense. Which is the now, have you looked at uh, the new the new thing that the governor uh, is putting out starting April 2008 to help uh, authorities like us to get into their plan. Have you seen any of it? No, I thought I mailed some stuff over to folks. I don't know. I don't so know that I've heard here. of that, actually. Yeah. It's on the website, the internet, and research it. We talked with those folks the other day. They've also opened it up to multi-employer plans like ours for uh, health insurance and retirement insurance. They haven't got all the bugs out of it yet for 2008, so they're shooting for that. But it may be something that we, uh, I'll look, I, I, I've got it in the office. I thought I sent it over. Maybe I did. You sent me something like that, Frank. Okay, never, okay. Was, okay. But I never saw anything, we never saw anything else that came out for it. And I didn't follow up. There's a seminar on it down in Albany. I think around December 4th, because that's where i got to be in Albany that day. And we called the, the gentleman and asked him. He said, you're more than welcome to come. But he said, I'm going to tell you something. So we got all the bugs out of this thing. But he says, it is going to be something. So maybe uh, if you can't find something on it, uh, get a hold of Brian Hammond, uh, business agent with my local. He'll give you the gentleman's name. Okay. Maybe there's nothing there, but we should take a look at everything. When you get it in place, it might be a way to say yeah, it's a statewide thing. I mean, I don't know what it's going to be, but they, it might be something that we're worth looking at. Okay, thanks. 
I just seen that in your notes. I want to make sure you It was a Okay. Any questions over on Mark? We'll read to Mr. Reese. Uh, we've been busy uh, coordinating the Alliance Energy Home Generation Plant uh, move at the port. Last month we submitted rates for a potential heavy lift cargo for the 2008 shipping season. We've been having some pretty serious negotiations on those. Continue negotiations with another uh, sizable shipment for 2008-2009 that uh, are ongoing. We're uh, working toward getting some rates for conveyor equipment, improving our load rate. Probably from about 200 tons to 400. I've <clears throat> uh, done some additional outreach and discussions with additional heavy lift cargo owners in the area. Uh, exhibited at the break boat conference, numerous contacts that we've made there. Uh, new tabletop booth, uh, port brochure. Uh, Mark went to a Northern Tier Corridor study meeting and uh, we followed up a letter regarding. Uh, them taking into consideration bypass or connector road to uh, Route 11, also taking into consideration the traffic in 416 and 401 Canada. Could affect us direct out bridge ties, but that eventually happens. Um, we finalized our agreement with DOT for the North Country Freight Needs Study and Comprehensive Plan work and had agreed to sign here again tonight. Did a boat mailing to Ontario-based firms, uh, several responses, uh, done a couple of site visits already, and have additional follow-ups uh, planned for uh, probably next week. So, pretty good response, actually. And it's a pretty decent prospect. Uh, any John, you figured it worked pretty well. Covered in Canada as far as advertisements. I think we Are we reaching out far enough, or I think we do? More. I think uh, Matt with the uh, representative of the Ottawa Business Journal this morning talked about doing pack that. That's worked well for us in the past. Talking about billboards up in Ottawa with the Joint Committee. That'll be coming up Wednesday. Um, I think we can step up a little bit. We'll be. How about the Toronto area? Can we step it up a little bit up in that area? Uh, Make sure we're not missing um, anything. Yeah. we One of the mailings we did to that area, and we did do some calls. There are more port-related calls. That, as far as industrial development, that uh, out of our region, or a firm product call here to Arkansas, just a bit more active. So we to the market next that being said, what we're finding is, uh, again, as you know, we partner with a lot of different sections, share resources, and uh, all that kind of good stuff. But uh, one of the key things that we found is there's representation. If you go to Montreal, there's an economic development representation up there. Go to Toronto, is there too? There's not in Ottawa, and that's one of the key things that uh, key things that we're able to be able to help solve that because here's obviously something 45 minutes away. Well, right now with this dollar, the way it's going to be, you know, could be a big player. Should be a lot of intersections. Yeah. <clears throat> I know there's a lot of people buying turkeys over here. <laughs> okay. oh, it's more expensive for them to actually can't be as good. Right after Wayne came on and before John came on, we had opened up some communications with the government of Canada because we found out that our signage, I should say we found out, our, we've always had an issue with our signage on 401 Park Bridge of being to Route 37 as opposed to, you know, bridge to United, you know, USA, that sort of thing, needed or we were interested in having that be larger and more visible. We were told the only way we could do that was through the government, and I think you just opened the dialogue of that. Has anyone ever followed up on that, or are we still working on getting better signage We're coming from Montreal? continuing to work on that, but the DOT, DOT's counterparts can decide. Uh, we've had no traction thus far on talking to the right? So we're trying to see if there isn't some other way that... I just want to make sure to follow the radar screen. Okay. It's in the scope of services, too, for the Wilbur Smith North Country Freight Study. You make sure that was it. Let me ask another question, as we're talking about the signage. 
I remember it's after we married. <laughs> And at that time, we also wanted to see, make sure we opened up communications and letters with the uh, Ottawa there. What do they call that? The embassy. Yes. Yeah, the United States has an embassy. Is that right? Yes. Because they may be able to help us, too, on that side of it. We have done a little outreach with the embassy, and the embassy tells them that's for us. So you are talking to yeah. us. Good. Good. That's all I want. The other place, I'm glad you mentioned that, the other place that we've interfaced that I very mentioned is the um, Minister of uh, Transport. Okay. His staff, Brian Hicks, up to John. Transport. Any questions of John? Being none, we'll move right into the Director of Operations Report, William E. Payne. Is that Ernest? <laughs> we uh, we received our third salt ship. We located 8,000 tons of it. Uh, we've got one more coming. He didn't uh, indicate yet what time. Uh, some of this is wrong already. Uh, the citrus pulp is gone. Uh, that's been trucked out. We relocated uh, 2,100 tons of DDGs from one building to the other to make room for Hominy, which the railroad is now unloading. And the heavy lift obviously didn't come last week. Uh, they're going to load the barges tomorrow. <laughs> and if I could just interject one of the things that when we were working on this project, I had to look up Hominy. What it is. Bleached corn. It's actually bleached yeah, you've corn. You've never been said that by your mother? I, if <laughs> I have, I don't remember. <laughs> they make the grit out. How many? Really? They make something out of it that nobody eats. <laughs> You're not okay. supposed to eat bleach, is what I've always said. You're not supposed to eat bleach. <laughs> it's called grits. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody's hungry after tonight, there should be about 1,800 tons of I take it you didn't want to do grits. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cow corn fat, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bill, you got us laughing anyway. Soaked in lye, not bleach. Think we have to. Is that your report, Bill? What's up? Any questions of Bill? We'll move right into the facility manager, Stephen Lawrence. Um, just a couple of things have been taken up um, a lot of my time. Was uh, we've been working on the security project out of the bridge and. Uh, They've got probably out of uh, uh, the project, probably 75% of that's complete with the fiberglass conduit on the bridge. And uh, that should be done by the first week of December. <coughs> um, you saw pictures of the uh, 14th Industrial uh, Building. Um, all the uh, asphalt binders down and foundations complete. The structural steel's up. You were there the other day, Fred. They're working on the, uh, should be dried in in another three weeks. Uh, we're there. That uh, weather's really helped us out on both of those projects. And um, the other thing um, was the, uh, I guess we got a clean bill of health on all of the um, the things that were related to the governor's thing on bridge collapse. Um, all the, the required reports were all sent in, and uh, um, there was no major issues found with that. So um, we, were, we, we expected that, but we were pleased with the outcome there. Now, do they do press releases for local newspapers? I, I've only seen ours mentioned when they talk statewide or something like that. I know we're one of those. When they talk numbers, we're just one of the numbers there, but um, uh, nothing nothing specific. No. I think we're just we're part of the whole group there when, um, that we met that November 1st deadline. David, uh, has there been any discussion with the state on the, on the moving of our towboats? Yeah. Um, well, it, not so much direct, but um, they've done preliminary survey of the whole area. The, the original, or the engineering firm that the state has picked is, they hired, I think it was Prudent uh, Engineering. I'm, I've heard the name, but I'm not yes, familiar. Sir. They've been around for two weeks. Uh, I think they had it coincided with the job at the psych center, but they've basically shot everything. And the people around here probably saw they were around our building and shooting all kinds of utilities and things there. So I think that's all related to the preliminary design. So I think that's encouraging. Um, uh, 
we saw that last week. So that's all. I, that, that's as much as I know about that, Fred. Okay. I just like to. I was over on the site the other day with Steve and looking the project over, and it's really like two weeks ahead of time. Really looks good. Coming good. And I see a lot of uh, people working there. That was. Looks like a good project. Yeah, one day when we're doing the paving, the structural steel, I think I counted over 30 people working there. So it was, a, you know, our money was being sent out, and the there were a lot of local people there working. So. Yeah. As far as that, it's really helped in that regard, too. Even I got a guy there. Yeah. Steve, what's the 11th industrial building? Uh, that is uh, the old part of Breckenridge. Oh, uh, Breckenridge. Yeah. Breckenridge. yeah. That, that was the one we re-seamed in there. We, had, uh, we, we got, I think we'll get four or five more years out of it. It's due, but um, we thought if we re-seamed it, it would uh, buy us some time. Okay. Any more questions to Steve? Uh, Steve, Galson Laboratories, when we reviewed the app yep. this afternoon, uh, the invoice said on a power tool cleaning project and said something about lead. Yeah, we, we use that for air monitoring of our crew on, uh, like when they're, we have to do periodic to know what the atmosphere is like and make sure that our, our procedures, we use uh, vacuum powered uh, air tools and so what we do is we we rent their monitors and they're all set up and they they do the, the air monitoring for us so that you know we're basically we're reaffirming what we do if we're doing it right and we get no hits generally you shouldn't see any part on the, their medical records of any lead getting in their blood and everything so it just reaffirms that we're doing things right so we use them periodically two or three times during the just to, um we don't have to do it but it's just Make sure that our guys are covered that way. It's the bridge staff. Correct. It's the bridge maintenance. Yeah. 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 It's a good thing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. reports. We have a large committee report, and we've we'll already into <coughs> the facility committee chairman. Jimmy James, you're up. So, uh, facility meeting met at three o'clock today. A number of items. Uh, many of these are actually going to be board packets tonight for uh, approval by the full board. Uh, first item was an easement with St. Lawrence Gas, uh, the gas service on the industrial park. Included. The second item is the transfer of the water line uh, will be paid to the city of Augsburg. We've actually tabled that because there's an invoice outstanding. City some money for the replacement of the water line, and we need some clarification on items on that. It's going to be tabled for next month. Um, CNS provided some preliminary uh, concept plans for the rail house. We did not. Uh, they do have any. They do not have any uh, budgetary numbers for us on the two scenarios, and we. I don't know if we can get them on the board or not. <clears throat> Basically, they've, they've shown two scenarios, one where we use the existing um, blue building, build the railroad spur into there, and the other is using the existing spur and constructing a building on the existing spur, which I'm, I guess we're not really much farther ahead than we were a month ago. Maybe it's a bit disappointing. So hopefully next month we'll have some uh, costs on, on two concepts. Uh, in your board packet uh, tonight, there's going to be a resolution to execute the contract with Freeman Peterson for the uh, bridge rehabilit rehabilitation project. Uh, also, uh, the is recommending that uh, the full board take action on the uh, freight house, uh, freight needs master plan, uh, port master plan, uh, Wilbur Smith. That's in our packet tonight. Um, discussed uh, grant <coughs> airport uh, of structure removal and uh, beacon project. Uh, resolution in our packet for 
approving the grant with DOT. Uh, you, you'll probably remember that from last month. Uh, the seventh item, and this is just what was more for information, was the is the airport fueling. Wade showed you the picture of the jet parked in front of our our fuel boy, but um, basically our fuel boy is going to become obsolete, and we have to placing that. Just preliminary information. Uh, staff's going to get back to us next week or next month with uh, some possible recommendations there. Uh, I guess that wraps up uh, our, our committee meeting. A lot of going on. A lot of it's uh, questions, of Jim. <laughs> uh, this one of the, the the issue on this uh, railroad building, the new engine house. Uh, I've went over that with the executive director, and I haven't had a chance to talk to all of you. I just want to let you know the one. It's the same building, but moving it. It's going to be the same bill. I didn't get that out of the meeting. I believe that to be the case, but I'm still waiting to see the details. Yeah, I would, I'd like I to see them. Because I'm not. of the price of putting up a new bill. But the other one there is what they want to do is come down now and go through right through that 13 acres, is it there? Yeah, there's two, two, two possible alternatives there, but I think it would probably be most appropriate to wait until we get to get some budgetary information from CNS on the boss. So. Uh, uh, that will answer our question right there, whether they're talking about relocating the building or not. I can't tell from the drawing, and unfortunately, I feel. I don't know what it is. Maybe you can push them along a little bit so we can drag the on this project a bit. I thought it was supposed to have been done this summer. Pushing very hard. <laughs> <laughs> I want this one done as much as you can. <clears throat> Any other committees? Uh, finance met this afternoon. 3.30, we reviewed the bridge and port abstracts and a number of questions that were satisfactorily answered. Uh, so I think, uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. We did have some discussion about loaders, about repair bills for our loader down the port, a 1983 loader. and the, It's getting kind of expensive to, to keep it going, so we're beginning to wonder at what point we need to point the bullet and replace that. And this is something I think it comes up probably every meeting for the last year and a half, or maybe since I've been on the board and Bill's over there laughing, but uh, I, I got to agree with Don that it's time to take some action on what we do with our equipment down port. You'll find you might get, as I go through this with the town, that you might get some money out of it <coughs> uh, as a trade-in, even though they know it's not a real good because they'll find somebody that can use it for a different kind and not a heavy, not the hauling we do it. Might get some money out of the trade. We did that in a couple pieces of pot stamp. and then the, and then we had the experience of putting forty five thousand dollars over two years on a piece of equipment that was eight thousand when we were done. Is it beneficial to us to lease rather than buy? Price. Mark, do you want to address that? We talked to Bill about that today, and you know, he didn't want to even want you to address. We're it. currently renting a loader on a month-to-month yeah. -month basis. Yeah. The lease purchase option is not really out there that we can find. When you say lease, yeah. you own it at the end of the three or five years anyways. It's basically a financing agreement. Okay. I just had a horrible feeling, too. I remember we talked about this at the last facilities committee meeting, and the bottom line with everything that's uh, that's been going on, we dropped the ball on that. That was supposed to be one of the items for the facilities this We'll get on that and get that for that But it's my understanding that we actually budgeted one for 0 mm -hmm. 7 We're currently yep. ordering right now. Here, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's clearly our fault, and I apologize. I don't know if the rest of the board feels, but I'd like to see that move forward. Well, if you see repair bills, and I know probably a year ago we talked about this, Mary, um, and we talked with Bill about it, and it's, it looks like it's time to, to think about doing it. That's when they got taken to Plattsburgh by piece, by piece, by piece. Yeah. Okay. Unfinished business. Activities and events. December fourth is changed to the thirteenth. Noon start up with lunch. 
Following lunch will be the workshop for the budget for January 1st. At the conclusion of that, there'll be a short half-hour break for committee re, uh, if they're needed. Then we'll go right after that committee's meet right into the regular board meeting. So it could be anywhere from 2.33, 3.30. If there's no need for committee meetings, then we'll move right into the regular board meeting. Do I have a problem with that? <coughs> okay. Business items. <clears throat> Under uh, general administration business items tonight, item A1 is the summer employment payment of 60% clothing allowance uh, <clears throat> for your consideration. In the past, the authority has approved a 6% bonus. For all temporary summer employees, this payment recognizes the excellent job done by the summer worker and also helps reimburse the students for wear and tear on clothing. The cost for this uh, 2007 summer period would be $2,180.89.93. Uh, we did have budget funds available for that purpose. Staff recommends approval to uh, pay this uh, bonus for temporary workers. How many summer students are eligible for that? To count on that. The call. Less than 20. Either 20, maybe. That might be nothing. That's bad enough for the. No. Maybe it's 10 or 12. Yeah, it ranged anywhere from 45 bucks to like 140. Yeah. The wages that was earned. So the six percent is six percent of their individual wages. Their wages for the summer. Yeah. I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. Second item up is the approval of the engineering agreement. Um, <coughs> item A two with Greenman Peterson. This is for a two point three seven nine million dollar project. We did, I apologize, we discussed this before the facility committee today and uh, reviewed the attached agreement that you have in the packet. Uh, with the uh, committee uh, uh, moved this forward to the board for consideration. And at this, at this point, uh, probably turn it over to Steve for any general questions. This is coming from the funding for this project was the 2005 New York State Transportation Bond Act. Mark, why don't you go ahead and explain how the money is going to come in and how it's going to go out in regards for the board members can understand. Okay, yep. Uh, just a brief history, as Wade said, this is a $50 million 2005 Bond Act money. And what this represents is the engineering fees for this project. Um, what will happen is if we approve this contract, if work gets done, then we'll get billings for this. Uh, what we'll turn around and do is pay those uh, billing requests. And then we'll have proof of that being done. We can get full reimbursement from the DOT for the money that we spent. So it comes out of our pocket first, if you will, and then we get reimbursed within probably 14 to 21 days. I think you should probably note that um, there's really kind of two phases to this contract. One is engineering or the design aspect, and the other is the construction inspection. You know, majority of this project construction inspection. We got round numbers, 450,000 this design. And that's a good point. Again, it crosses both the design and construction uh, phase, and also is a construction inspection as well. There is one change that we'd like to make to this. Uh, specifically in wording, the middle paragraph, last sentence. This agreement has been this agreement has been reviewed and approved. We'd like to change that to this agreement has been reviewed and accepted by New York State DOT. They don't actually. That is one page. <laughs> Do you feel free 
anything at all about doing this on a reimbursement basis? No, not so much this, but the bigger project as a whole, the $15 million, we can start ordering steel and getting parts in. Probably need a short, kind of a short-term line of credit to carry us for 14, 20 days in between payments. Thought uh, you might. Yeah. Well, we've had a couple of banks show a lot of interest in that already based on our balance sheet, so it shouldn't be a problem getting a line of credit. Okay. Although the interest on that is not reimbursable for the project, that would be something you stop paying. So you have to plan your drawdown care about it. Yeah. So it's all going to be done, though, electronically, right? Yeah, the electronic payment system we signed up for, uh, we're promised is pretty, pretty, pretty quick. So if the material arrives on the site, once we get it, we got 14 days to get our money. Once we show proof of payment, then it takes about 14 days to get our money. We need either a canceled check or a proof that has been paid. <coughs> Longer than 14 days, you wait for a cancel check. That's what I'm working. That's what I'm looking at. Well, By the time you get it back, no. well, we can check online every day. Yeah. So we can you get proof online, no? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'd make that motion. Motion made by Roger. Second. Jimmy seconds it. Any more questions? All in favor, signs over saying aye. Uh, aye. Both. The third item is uh, general administration. It's a resolution of support for the Portland presentation reconstruction study. As you can see, uh, there are some very good points that the Portland presentation folks brought to our attention here to the reconstruction study, and they're asking for a resolution of support from the board of directors. Of Urging Exxon Mobil to continue to support the efforts to clean up and revitalize the historic site, historic site, which played an important role in the history of North America. One moment. All in favor, St. Jervis, say aye. 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 John. Yep, item D1 is uh, John Earhart. <clears throat> Basically, this is a at a rate of 170 per month, November 1st, 2007 through October 30. Uh, that was wrong there. What's the correct date? Uh, December 1st, 07. December 07 through December 31st, 07. <laughs> Needs to be changed in the report and the resolution. The uh, this agreement was uh, uh, paid for in full via check. Uh, I ended up. You'll notice a difference here. I accidentally cost the authority 15 bucks by quoting the old rate of 170 per month, when in fact uh, it should be 175. So rectify that. Uh, on the next round, with, uh, Mr. Beerhard, but uh, we got money in advance. We got the money in advance. Can't ask for better than that. You're in some interest. Give me a present fifteen bucks right now. <laughs> <laughs> Put it a CD, Mark. Your order is. There you go. Yeah. Motion made by Mary. <laughs> Seconded by. Second. By Bill. All in favor, stick to say aye. 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 Opposed. We need to finish for a story agreement with. <coughs> Duckman Mechanics. Uh, this, is, again, is a hangar space at the airport. This is 175 per month, uh, December 1st, 2007, expiring November 30th, 2000. Included in this agreement, permit proof of appropriate insurance, naming the OBPA as additional insurance. I have a motion. I'll take that one. Roger. Second. Bob Bell. Second. All in favor, secretary saying aye. 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 Anger Day here at the Bridge and Port Authority, item B3, same thing, transfer storage agreement with James Robertson, uh, period December 1st, 2007, expiring November 30th, 2008, 175 per month. Have a second? Second. All in favor, signal saying aye. 
Who will grant with the New York State Department of Transportation? The easiest way to talk about this uh, this grant is to refer in general to our funding project at the airport. You'll recall many times when we have projects at the airport, they're funded on 95% uh, FAA, 2.5% New York State DOT, 2.5% OBPA. We've dealt with the FAA portion. Uh, this grant deals with accepting the New York State DOT portion, the 2.5%. So while there are some large numbers here on uh, the overall portion of the project, there are two specific projects. One is uh, for 94.50, and the other is for 58.75. And specifically, this deals with the airfield electric building, the airport beacon, and the obstruction removal on airport projects. Those respective accounts. I'll move that. We have a second. second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor, second, favor, say aye. 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 Support. <laughs> Item five on your agenda uh, is uh, held until next time. The city attorney is continuing to work through the report on public services. It shows on the agenda, but shows on the blank page. Item C1, the Port of Ogdensburg, can be discarded. This is the Citrus Bowl, which is a sixth left port. Item C2 is approval of a handling and storage agreement with the New York and Ogdensburg Railway, DBA, uh, Seaway Bulk Services, for the commodity of hominy. Specifically, you can see the receiving and stockpiling rates, truckloading rates, dealing, storage, uh, and overtime. That should say uh, how many in there as opposed to Citrus Bowl <laughs> in the report section. Mm -hmm. So we'll make that correction. This is, of course, probably great, great there. This is a short term agreement basically through November 13th of this year, ending December 31st, 2007. And we anticipate about 1,800 tons. Motion. Um, Roger. Seconded by Bill. All in favor, signify saying aye. 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 This is already coming in? Yes, it is. And then the citrus, are we going to see any more of that? Uh, doubtful. Doubtful. That is uh, most of that left here. It did get sold to local farmers? or uh, Some of it went to Vermont. Some of it went to a local uh, sheet mill for blending. But it didn't. It wasn't profitable for... Oh no, it was a it was only a small amount. No, not for us, but for the for the company that was it was only how many rail cars did we have bill of uh, citrus? I don't recall it didn't it was five. It wasn't a large amount. But they considered that it, it wasn't a viable commodity up here. Uh, uh, no, I don't think sure. that was the railroad the railroad got that one. Citrus Is that what it is? Crushed oil? Deals. Peels, yeah, the rinds from the peels. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. They're all going to smell though. Interesting. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back around next year. Thank you. The floors are good and clean down there now with all that. Mm -hmm. So your floors are good and clean down there with all that citrus. Absolutely. Big air pressure. Item C3 at the Port of Ogdensburg is the approval of the transfer and storage agreement with Potter's Industry. This is for 40,000 square feet in storage uh, warehouse P5 at the Port of Ogdensburg, which expires uh, November 30th this year. <coughs> we have a, a renewal and, and uh, transfer and storage agreement with Potter's at a rate of 33 cents per square foot per month for the period uh, December 1st through November 30th of 2008. Motion may be married. Second it. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 No, Bill made his hand first. Okay. Right on that. I've covered it. Wait. That is, is that a renewal? <laughs> yep. That was more for a It's expansion of uh, speed hiring. Uh, rate Very high. Significant revenue for us. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, we're we'll first associates in New York. That's correct.
correct heat <laughs> study. That's correct. Item C4 is, is just that. It deals with the freight heat study and the comprehensive plan for authority assets. Uh, the authority issued a request for a proposal to consultants to implement the freight heat study and comp uh, comprehensive plan for all authority assets, including the Port of Ogdensburg. There were three uh, respondents that you can see there. We evaluated these in conjunction with uh, staff and uh, DOT, and as a result, based on the evaluation of these criteria, the Selection Committee recommends hiring Wilbur Smith Associates, late in New York, to undertake uh, this uh, cost is uh, $248,105. What's this like? It's not a fair or better. Request for proposal. Thank you. So we don't have to go with Wilbur Smith. You pick either one of any of these for us. Based on the evaluation for the committee, really mathematically came, uh, came on top, basically. <laughs> so they did the best job for us, basically. It ain't because of money, then? No, no. Well, it's so close. Yes. I mean, no. I'm asking for some input here. I know this gentleman raised the questions at the meeting. Yeah. Just so I want people to know that we talked about this. Well, there would be $900 apart, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Totally funded by a grant. Yes. Yes. We need a motion to approve Wilbur Smith Associates. Don? Bill seconded. All in favor, second to say aye. Come on, aye. 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 All in favor, say they were saying aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> last, but not, last but not least tonight, item B1 is uh, Commerce Park approval of easement with St. Lawrence Gas Company. This uh, deals with gas service to extend to 14th Industrial Building, which is now on construction. Um, as you can see, it allows them to construct, operate, maintain, inspect, patrol, alter, relocate, so on and so forth. Everything uh, associated with the traditional easement. And there is no cost associated with this. I'll make a motion. Motion made by Mary, seconded. Second. By uh, Jim. All in favor, secretary say saying aye. 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 Uh, other such matters to become before the board, is there any? There are no other such matters uh, this evening. However, this is an excessive executive session on the right uh, topic. The stated document. Uh, uh, it's all stated down here in the adjournment. Yes, sir. And I need a motion to one do it second session. So moved. First, excuse me, Bill made the motion, but first, is there any comments from citizens or staff or anybody here at the authority? Press, got any questions? No. And if there's anything comes out of this, no. Uh, staff in the press has been notified the 13th, 12 o'clock start. Lunch. We have free shrimps. We'll be here early. I need a meeting to go into the second session. Bill made that. Mary seconded it. And bring the shrimp. All in favor, say good for saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much.